what we have on today is a rather interesting Toyota. Now, I'll give you a couple of clues as to what it is. Now, it's mid-engined, rear-wheel drive, a two-seater, and it has the bonus of a manual transmission. No, Toyota didn't revive the MR2. Instead, what we have here is the Toyota Light Ace. But first, what is the Light Ace like on the road? Now, if we're gonna compare it to, say, a passenger car, no, it's pretty crude, to be honest, to put it bluntly even, because I'm gonna raise my voice a little bit just so you can hear me, because there's practically no sound deadening in here. But you know what? This is a commercial vehicle. Let's look at other aspects of it. So for instance, as you can see, I've been rowing gear, so you can only get a light ace with a manual. Now, of course, this thing does not have hill start assist. I mean, well, it is a low cost cargo carrier. So your clutch skills are gonna be put to the test in this one, but the clutch is pretty easy to modulate. Travels a little bit long, but it's not too bad. For the steering, well, it's light, it's easy, maneuverable, and basically everything you expect from a small vehicle. Now, performance, well, it uses a 1.5 liter engine, doesn't exactly have 100 horsepower, although torque is in the region of 130, 140 ish Newton meters. So, for its size, it's got an okay amount of torque, and there is a fair bit of pickup from the lower rev. So that's what you sort of need in a utility vehicle. If you're talking deliveries, then I think it can carry the weight well enough as long as you don't overload it. Now, if you're curious about payload, well, it's 750 kilograms for this cargo van version. If you lead a little bit more, the drop side pickup raises that by 50 kilograms to 800 kilograms. Now, I do have to point out a couple of things about it. Yes, it's a given that the ride comfort isn't going to be the best. I mean, unladen, any cargo van is going to ride like, I don't know, it's got no springs in it. That's to be expected. It's not like you're going to daily drive this thing or if ever you're going to use it for business, you usually have load at the back. Now, another complaint I would have would be the seats. Now, a little extra padding would go a long way in terms of driver comfort. And at the same time, a little bit more heat shielding around my bottom would be greatly appreciated. Especially right now because I can feel a fair bit of heat coming from under my bottom. And last but not least would be the brakes. When you initially press it, it feels like nothing's happening and you're not really slowing down. And then it's just mush all the way. But they are effective enough that the brake pedal feel doesn't inspire too much confidence. But then again, that's typical of any cab over van or truck or any in between. So while the brakes, you know, they need a little bit more feel or feedback, there is a plus point to all this because the Light Ace cargo van comes standard with stability control. And it is perhaps the only vehicle in its segment to have it. Basically, it helps you in an emergency maneuver so you don't run the risk of tipping this thing over. I can't exactly guarantee about the cargo at the back, but at least your wheels are still pointing the right way down. Now, of course, the reason why anyone would consider one of these is because of the cargo floor space and the cargo area in general. And that means you don't get any back seat, so we've had to improvise a little bit. Of course, we don't recommend doing this sort of setup while you're moving because one, the seats aren't bolted and two, there aren't any seat belts back here. Now, the cargo area, it's over two meters long in terms of cargo floor space and you get about 1.6 meters in width. You can stack items up to more than 1.3 meters. So all in all, it is a very spacious cargo area considering the footprint of this vehicle. Now you can load up a lot of water gallon jugs and it can be a perfect courier van. Or if you let your imagination run a little bit wild, you can turn it into a mini camper.
Now, don't expect any touchscreen or Apple CarPlay or any of that in the Light Ace. This is still a commercial vehicle nonetheless. But you do get, well, a rather basic radio. You do get Bluetooth and a USB port and an auxiliary port. Now, this little thing I have not seen in the longest time. Now, if you were born, say, in after 1998, you probably don't know what this is. But if you're someone my age or older, this is called a dash shield. And, well, obviously, it's an optional accessory. But um, it's just amusing to see one of these again. Now, as for the rest of the interior, the steering wheel might look a little bit familiar, especially if you owned an Altus with an airbag from 2001. It really looks like a 2001 Altus steering wheel. You do get a pair of cup holders on each side, and for the instrument cluster, it is also as basic as they come. You don't even get a tachometer. Instead, you get a shift indicator. Now, those one, two, three things you see on the dash face, well, that's the red line. So if you're somewhere here already and you're still in first gear, you gotta shift up. Another thing that's a bit of a throwback from the 90s is this. Children, watch this. This little lever rolls down the windows. And if you turn it the other way around, it rolls them back up. Technology. But kidding aside, there are one or two things I would like improved in the Light Ace. Well, a tachometer would have been nice. And um, at the very least, a tilt steering wheel would have been a good addition, just to make it a little less bus-like, a little more comfortable in the more natural driving position. And also, if you're carrying a passenger with you, well, a passenger because it's only a two-seater, this seat is fixed. You can't slide it forward, you can't slide it back. What you get is what you get. And if you have a tall person beside you, well, they're gonna have to jam their legs down in the foot well. Now, in terms of dimensions, the Light Ace measures a little over 4.1 meters long and about 1.6, 1.7 meters wide. So it's a narrow body, it's a short body. And if you combine it with the sizable cargo area, the compact dimensions make it a pretty good small enterprise vehicle. As for design, let's be honest here, nobody's gonna buy this because of its looks. You do get rectangular headlights at the front, unpainted front bumpers, that short front steel rims, it's as basic as it gets, and uh, more unpainted stuff at the side and at the back. It's not exactly the light ace, well, people my age or older grew up with. It's no longer that bubble-shaped van we knew and some of us loved or hated. But um, in spirit, it sort of still is. You still sit on the engine, it's still rear-wheel drive, and it's still a manual. But its focus has sort of changed over the years. It's now a utility vehicle rather than, well, a passenger van. Although on that note, over in Taiwan and in Indonesia, there is a passenger version. So we're kind of hoping that Toyota would bring that in one of these days. Here's a bit of a disclaimer. If we were to judge the Light Ace the same way we would review, say, a Vios or a Camry or a Lexus product, well, it fails miserably because well, it's a cargo van, it's a utility vehicle. So we have to judge it by those merits. And with that, we start off with the pros of the Light Ace. Now, what we liked about it is it's very maneuverable, very light to drive. You love the clutch action in particular. It's very soft and, well, it's really easy to sort of learn how to drive on this thing. Another thing we did like about it is, of course, the huge cargo area. It's got a long loading bay. It's got dual sliding doors on top of that to make ingress and egress of cargo much easier. Another thing we also liked was the price because you can get this cargo van for 695,000 pesos. Now, there are a variety of body styles available. There's the drop side pickup, this cargo van, the FX body, and the aluminum van. And of course, prices range from around the mid 600 mark to about 720, 730,000 pesos, depending on your configuration. But perhaps the biggest plus for us, aside from the price and everything else we mentioned, is safety. It doesn't have much of a crumple zone or any of that, but it does make up for it by having stability control standard. Now, none of its competitors have stability control, and that means in an emergency maneuver, 
it's not just gonna tip over or slide out of control. As for cons, we're gonna take a different perspective on this and we'd rather focus on sort of the driver comfort or passenger comfort and a bit of the dynamics. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the ride because it's a cargo van and it's already a given that it's gonna be bouncy and jiggly and firm when it's unladen, but rather I wish there was a little bit more heat protection around the bum area because you really do feel it as the miles pile on and really that's gonna affect well driver comfort passenger comfort and really your state of mind and stress while driving another would be the fixed passenger side seat now it would be nice if you could slide it back a little bit further and an addition of a tachometer would be nice as for the driving dynamics it's well a utility vehicle so it's not sporty or any of that and that's totally fine but we do have a gripe about its brakes. It is very mushy upon initial pressing and it just feels like it's gonna sink to the floor. The brakes itself are fine, but really the pedal modulation, not so good. So maybe a bigger Hydrovac when this model is updated would do the fix. As for the rating, again, we're not gonna rate this the same way we rate passenger cars, but as a utility vehicle, well, we're gonna give it an eight out of 10.